Hey, greetings from LA. A great town with fine people and a very cool beach scene. Now, I'm a big ocean person. I like hanging out with people who like to play in the ocean. Hang out with the dolphins, kick it with the seagulls. But look at this. Unfortunately, we've been trying to fight ocean pollution for the longest time. Until now, we're still not finished. Oh yeah, we've made some progress, but there's still a lot of major work that needs to be done. The ocean are like the lungs of our planets. 70% of our oxygen comes from them. And you won't believe what the number one source of ocean pollution is. I'm gonna give you three guesses. Nope, not industrial toxics. Uh-uh, or sewage. Nope, wrong. Or unnatural disasters. It's a lot bigger problem than that. Unfortunately, we're it. We're the number one source of ocean pollution. And it's a shame that we're so good at it. Basically, while we're falling asleep at the wheel, us Angelinos are dropping tons of stuff all over the ground. With the rain and even overwatering lawns and gardens, all of that grind runs off our streets all the way to the beach. Viruses in our own pollution make ocean swimmers sick. You know the plastic and diapers that are supposed to be disposable? can take 450 years to break down. Most of us still haven't made the connection between storm drain catch basins and having clean or really fouled up beaches. But hey, people are starting to make the connection, so there's no turning back now. Tour time. I want you to meet Chuck Turhalo. He's with the city of Los Angeles Hyperion Treatment Plant. How you doing, Chuck? Hi, welcome to Hyperion. Thank you. This is a very cool place, but it's not your typical LA tourist attraction. Man, look at all this major construction. We have over a billion dollars worth of construction going on here right now. This is a large commitment by the citizens of Los Angeles. We want to ensure that the ocean water is as clean as possible to swim and fish in. So what kind of stuff do you get in here? We get uh, wastewater. It basically comes out of your house. Whenever you flush your toilet, use the uh, sink, the shower, and wash clothes. So this right here, what exactly is this? This is our end product. We get 350 million gallons per day of sewage coming in. This is our end product. This is so clean that once we take this, pump it five miles offshore, we can mix it with the ocean water and it is, uh, will sustain marine life. Now I want to let you know about these wastewater treatment plants. They're 100% focused. Their main job is to make sure that the pollution from our municipal wastewater doesn't run into the ocean. But in our world, well, we need to understand that the trash that we see running down our streets gets caught into our catch basin, which leads into our oceans and never gets treated, ever. And it's not up to Chuck and his fellow workers at Hyperion to take care of this urban pollution problem. It starts with us. It's up to us to do it individually every day. Tour time. We're going to leave the streets of LA now. We're going to go down to one of LA's largest storm drain channels, which we have right down below. Come on, this is so cool. Now here's something you sure don't think about every day. Looking at all this sure gives you a whole new perspective. Imagine that this is part of a freeway system, but the freeway system's underground, and it starts in every neighborhood in the city of Los Angeles, even in the county of Los Angeles, over 1,500 miles of storm drains, and they all come together and end up straight in the ocean. All this trash here, plus all the chemicals you wash off your garden when you water the yard, every drop of oil that comes out of every single car in Southern California, all of that ends up on the street and it gets washed into a storm drain and goes straight to the ocean. Well, I never knew how much trash gets stuck down here, Chuck. It's incredible, isn't it? You know, the next time you're in the grocery store and somebody asks you if you want a paper bag or a plastic bag, well, this is the answer to what happens to plastic bags. You know, just yesterday we were filming uh, the cleaning up of a catch basin in downtown LA, and I just want everybody to know to see where it ends up. Why don't we take a look at that footage? Now, what we're gonna see today is the cleaning of a catch basin. Now, this is what a catch basin looks like. I didn't know what it was till my buddy told me it was what I lost a set of keys in. And what you find a catch basin is on every corner in every neighborhood and every city that you live in. Now, what we're gonna do today is watch Sergio here clean this catch basin. Now, Sergio, how you doing? Hey, how you doing, Chris? Uh, if you could please explain what exactly you're going to do and what this contraption is going to do right behind you. Yeah, we received a call that the street was flooded, and, and we found the source of the problem here with the cash basin full of debris. So what we're going to do, we're going to use this vector to suck up all the trash out of there and clean, make it clean so the water can flow freely. Perfect. Let's watch this puppy perform. OK, come on. You can see us. What I'm going to do, I'm going to start the engine right now.
All of that trash that you just saw there that got collected into this truck, you can basically eliminate it by just not littering into the catch basins because all of that goes straight into the ocean. Now what I want to let you know is that there's 200 to 300 of these that have to be cleaned every day by crews like Sergio. Now they're doing a great job. I never knew that, that much trash could fit in there. Now there's 45,000 of these all over the Los Angeles city. Now they start in your own neighborhood. And what you want to do is make sure that they do not get clogged like you saw earlier because what happens is your street starts to flood. And that's a good lead in for the city of Los Angeles' special mission to try and teach people how they can solve this problem. It's really pretty simple because it's something that happens in each of our daily routines. In other words, if I clean up what I do around my house and in my life and my neighbors do the same thing, one at a time, we each have the power as individuals to make a tremendous difference. Now what's the best way to avoid polluting the ocean with toxics? No brainer, you don't buy them. Use the non-toxic stuff. Store the questionable stuff in dry places. Now if you need to use them, follow the directions. But please, keep them a million miles away from storm drains. That includes even the water you use to clean your paintbrushes and buckets. Oh, and that's the word. Don't overdo it with fertilizers and bug spray. If the instructions say to use two squirts, Four squirts doesn't mean it's going to work twice as good. In fact, the extra stuff is really bad because that's what runs off into the street. Now even biodegradable soap sets are a bad thing to hit the streets. So pull your car up to the lawn, save water and the planet at the same time. Now if you don't have a lawn, head out to the car wash. They can at least recycle the water. But this is a lot more fun. Now don't be a hoser, be a broomer. <laughs> and don't think just because the leaves and grass are natural, they don't cause a problem. They rot and turn into algae and things far more gross. Speaking of gross, pick up after your dog. If you think this is bad, contemplate swimming in it. Think about it. Now this part is easy. Recycle everything you can. It's all interconnected. Instead of dumping it, recycle your glass, your plastic bottles, your cans, your newspapers, your oil, and even your toxic stuff. This logo tells you not to dump anything in there. Zip. Nada. Nothing goes in there but rain. So nothing comes out of here but rain. Do you want to make a difference? Make the connection between storm drains and the ocean. Do the right thing. It's a pretty easy gig. <laughs>